Hey everybody, welcome once again to our Low on Health year end review. This one is for the TV we watched in 2020. Hello Vision. Everything like else that happened in 2020, we had more than enough time to watch TV, but also there was a lot of new TV release that was yes, solid. There was. There was a lot of good TV that came out there last year, which is a very good thing. There wasn't too much. There's was a decent amount of stuff that we went back and rewatched or watched like the first seasons of and got caught up to, but there are definitely a lot of shows released in 2020 that were just rock solid. Yeah. Considering TV is usually something we don't care about and it's usually really low on our list. Yeah, generally we don't watch a lot of TV. But I will say TV this year in 2020 um, just blew us away compared to even movies. And I would even say to games. Like really TV like and anime. I would say movies or t mo uh, TV was the best of all like the content categories that we watched. Yeah, probably. Easily, I would say. Um, so we're going to go over some of the, of course, the top, and then we'll go through everything. So starting off the bat, the first top one is going to be Star Trek Lower Decks. It is very refreshing to see a Star Trek series. It's a comedy. That's a solid comedy. It's a comedy. It is an excellent comedy. If you like, if you like comedy, if you like Star Trek, either one of those, definitely watch this. If you like both, you're going to love this series. If like, you like cartoons or animated stuff in any capacity... You'll probably adore it. Would you, I can't say because I don't watch Rick and Morty, but like it's a it's it's a Rick tamer. and Morty. It's tamer. It's it's not trying to be edgy or gross. Yeah, it's for, tamer for the lols as like Rick and Morty. As much as you could stay, because you imagine Star Trek wants to keep it a little bit. And it's it's Star Trek. It's not you know like the Orville where it's like offshoot mm -hmm. type of you know oh this this is this is Star Trek. Um, but no, no this it's, is it's very good. And it's really we good. We really want to recommend it. Yeah, it's the number one for a reason. Yeah, uh, the next one's gonna be Saved by the Bell, which I didn't really care that much about. I love Saved by the Bell. Back in the day, it was made specically for my demographic. This, but it's really good. And but in it's this, really in this newer one, isn't like the new class. Isn't like all the other reboots of like. Full House or anything. No, it is solidly good. The characters are amazing. The yeah. scenarios, the stories it's, 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 are I, good. I have never seen something that continues, reboots, and lambastes something at the same time. So well. With as much excellence as Saved by the Bell does. So like, if, if you have any nostalgia for it at all, I would recommend this series. If you're looking to watch a... Like a teenage high school coming of age sort of drama comedy, mm -hmm. recommend it too. Like it's just it's great. It's it really really is. Um, and then one of the shows that we know nobody really have ever heard about, which actually there's like three in the top ten, uh, Tales from the Loop, which very good sci-fi is series. like it's like okay, it's it's the it's the lo-fi of listening. It's like the lo-fi of sci-fi. Like listening to lo-fi music, it's like that but sci-fi. Like. Um, it's Night chill. Vale, like Welcome it's, to Night it's, Vale ish. It's kind of like a tamer, eerie Indiana. No, 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 no. It's like it's like Dark Mirror, but not dark. Yeah, if, that if would... you if you take all of the grim dark and depression out of Dark Mirror, it Tales from the Loop is very like that. There's it's not gross. It's 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 very it's almost it's chill. It's almost I would say somber. Chill. That's yeah. why I, yeah, that's yeah. why it's a lo fi. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very somber and just like. It's a sci it's sci-fi lo-fi. And it also looks great. Like the cinematography yeah. is amazing. The effects are amazing. It is just a great show. It's eerie. You keep waiting for it to go dark and then it doesn't. It doesn't. And it's just it's just it's just solid. Um and I think that that's an Amazon one, I believe. So, yes. Um, I I'm fairly certain. Most people have Amazon. Um just like upload. Upload is another one that nobody has probably heard about. I believe is also on Amazon. Um, and it's just like the greatest take, I think, on like a digital afterlife, a digital afterlife, uploading your brain to the net. It is just so cool. And like, it's a well, not a parody, but it's definitely a comedy. The world building is just mwah. It's very interesting. The world building is great. Yeah. Um, and I know you're like you when we were first watching, you're like, I love this world. I want to live in this suck. Because it's like, you can pretend it's like 20, 30 years in the future, but like not like flying cars, not like Minority Report. It's, it's not still like kind crazy. Of, yeah, it's very, very good and interesting. Um, Utopia, 
which is kind of like your very ah, it dark, got, it got, gruesome. It got way too close to reality at the very end of this series, though, yeah. which I think is why they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to make a second season. I'm like, you know, I understand. But it is a great, <laughs> it gritty, is, dark series. Yeah, that, all the other stuff hasn't been very grim dark. That is very, very grim dark. Um, but entertaining so because bag. the thing about these things is because we don't know anything about the properties like that they're based on most of the time. Yeah, because Utopia is based on a comic book, like, I believe. So we have no idea. So the, the twists or the turns or the events that happen in the shows, we have no idea what's going to come. And they're not tropist. They're not algorithmic. Like, you know, you have yeah, no idea what's going to happen. you're not watching something saying, this character is going to say blah, blah, blah. And there it is. Or they're going to act this way. Like, I, I, we enjoy, greatly enjoy the series. We have no idea where they're coming from. Yeah, we like series where we can't just predict immediately what's going to happen next. Um, Which I know Marcus has a great appreciation for as well. They do. Um, Killing Eve is a series that's been out for a while. We heard about it, got cut off onto it, watched the newest season. It is it's, funny because it's not something we would normally watch. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a drama. Yeah. I guess. But it's just it's entertaining as hell. Like if, the character, the characters are great. Like all the characters. If you like, if you're like a murderino, where you like listening to you know like serial killer podcasts and true crime stuff. If you're a true crime fan, but you like dramas and you're looking for something to watch, Killing Eve would probably be perfect because yeah. it is about it's about a cop and a serial killer and the cop chasing the serial killer and the serial killer kind of like messing like with I the cop. Like I don't want to equate to Death Note cuz it's not like that but it has no. has a it's in the it's in the spectrum of that? No, Death Note is more like how can I connive my way out of every single problem? But what's funny is if you look at the other series that we watch, like Killing Eve would be the one the biggest of the mainstream probably out of all those that people would have watched. Yeah. Um Fantastic female leads in Killing Eve. Yes. Um, Kipo, which is, once again, a Netflix show, um, which I love. Like, it has a great style. It's very cute. Characters, like, interesting story. I don't particularly story. like the art style, no. but it's just because it's But what it's about the atmosphere, thing. like, the music, and then just, like, the... Yeah, the music is really good. I don't know. It's like, it's, like, it's, like, just on the edge of my, like, the stuff that I like. Um, it is a fantastic series. It's just not... not Quite straight up my avenue, but like highly recommend. Um, and then we have Owl House, which is a Disney Adorable. show, which is just it's cute so, as hell. It's like so cute. Once again, we don't how, so endearing. We're big fans of all these shows, like even like Shira and Voltron and everything. And like as you see, Utopia above that is completely different than that. Then more the Killing Eve, but like these are solid shows. Like we can respect them and like enjoy them, and they're just good writing, good characters, and good yeah. scenarios. My taste in stories is definitely more. Uh, varied than my taste in music um now for nine we have brave new world which is of course a take on that book series surprisingly very soft core oh my god it was just like the whole thing was very soft core porn so once again that is kind of in my wheelhouse and i'm always a fan of like the utopia dystopias um and i love 1984 and brave new world like i read those books when i was a kid the giver and whatnot i love those worlds so seeing this more adult take on that um, was just awesome to actually make a TV show that does that. Um, was just cool. we, we never heard anybody talk about it at No, all. Just, just like Tales from the Loop or Upload, nobody has mm. probably heard about these or had friends that watched them. Because there's tons of stuff Because there's a lot of stuff that was out. Um, the other show we watched, <laughs> number 10, is Star Trek Picard. That's not to say it's bad. The idea is it was there great. There was a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great that stuff in that. It was just better. Um, but the idea is it's great. The thing is it maybe leverages too much on nostalgia, but that's fine for us and some people, but not for others. Um, yeah, because we were both really big Star Trek fans growing up. That, and I like it because it's technically like the furthest in the Star Trek timeline, canonic timeline that we've seen on the screens, I think. Don't hold me to that. But yeah, no, we really enjoy Star Trek Picard. This doesn't say it's bad, but out of the... 44 shows that we watch. It just happens to be number 10. Um, scrolling down here, you can see this is our breakdown of the top 10 that we just discussed. Um, and then we have just the other shows we watched. Oh, God, yeah. Castlevania Season 3 happened. Castlevania on Netflix is still great. Just knocking it out of the freaking Once again, it would park. be in our top 10, but we don't like <clears> to <throat> give 
multiple seasons of stuff if we haven't already watched the first. Like Killing Eve, that, we watched one through seasons one through three. Yeah, Castlevania season three. I think the only reason we didn't put that in our top ten is because it was season three, not like a new series. Yeah, that, that we does make sense. Like, yeah, we just don't we don't do that. Um, Daybreak, Otherwise, that that would be because season three is just like so good. Um, Russian Doll, we finally got to because that was punted off a bunch. Um, which was also kind of a really cool like yeah, time yeah. loop thing, like Palm Springs the movie or uh, the game one game over. Um, you have Dracula, which is good. Future Man, which that nobody's seen that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Alter Carbon season two, we definitely didn't enjoy it as much as season one. No, like no, we were not even. not that great. Um, Doctor Who, we're starting to lose favor with, just not from. The characters, but more or less the scenarios being retread for the thousandth millionth time, which I hear like, about all the time. Oh, it's gonna be the Daleks. Like, oh, it's gonna be the so, Cybermen. Like, it's just the same oh, stuff. Oh, it's gonna be that. And you're like, mm. you you get bored with it. I get bored with that. Really I real quick. really like her doctor. I really like her doctor too. I, I, I really like, like, I like her multiple compared compa- to Capaldi. I like her multiple companions. I just don't enjoy the scenarios that we seem to be retreading. Um, DuckTales Season 3, Duck which Tales is, is solid, still solid, has solid, been the solid, solidest solid, show solid. that we've watched over the decade. The last season happened. That's might get next year's show of the year just because it's over. We know you it's mean, over at that point. And that, they, did, they did an excellent job ending it, too. Like, that final season was just awesome. I would say DuckTales is the best reboot um, of the last decade. Easily. All right, but I would even say two decades because I can't even think of whenever another re- good reboot there's been. Um, yeah. Dave, it's probably the best reboot ever. Dave was just a cool, funny show along the lines of, like, I love Atlanta, and this is kind of different tonally, but kind of interesting, the same, like, upcoming rapper type story or the behind the scenes of the industry. It was very entertaining. It's one of the shows it's I start watching, and then Rose starts watching it, too, going, like, oh, wow, yeah. this is actually really well-written, and it's funny. Yeah, it, 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 it almost annoys me when that happens. You're like, I'm going to watch a show. I'm like, I have no interest whatsoever, and then I'm, I'm doing something else, like drawing or just puts it on my phone or playing Animal Crossing, and um, then I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> um, we also have New Pope, which is the, uh, the second season of the... I actually watched this with you, and I didn't watch Pope? the first season. What was the first one called? I'm blanking on New it now. Pope? Young Pope. Young, Young Pope. Pope was the yeah, first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is New Pope with uh, Malkovich. Um, still also good. Like For me, it's just really cool, not necessarily the dogma and the machinations and behind the scenes, but just like... The sets and the, the, the like just they, a lot of them weren't sets. The Vatican let them film, and that's what I'm like. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like Propaganda. the actual locations. Uh, Westworld season three, which was extreme, meh. It was all right. It uh, wasn't bad at all. It uh, wasn't bad at all. It just wasn't as good as the first two seasons, and not as good as a bunch of the other stuff we watched. Um, City porn, which is essentially a show about different adult industries in certain in, like towns and stuff, which was kind of cool. In different in different. Uh, yeah, intimacy business models like yeah. you know, like cuddle piles and you know, like hug therapists and that type of stuff. We do have Shira season five, which was very, very good, amazing. And I'm Just still great. I'm still bitter about all the pages that they took from Voltron, and you know, like they they just like. Straight up copied a bunch of stuff out of Voltron. It's like they get all the praise that. It's like, yeah, guess what? Two male leads did that first, but you know, you homophobes won't let two dudes kiss, but you'll let two chicks kiss because that's hot. Um, but Shiro is one of the <laughs> ones that would be in our top ten. And once again, when I guess when you mentioned the recent reboots in the last past decade or so, we could say Voltron and Shira would definitely rank up there, but DuckTales would still be the top among those, definitely. Yeah, um, I love Voltron more for reasons that are probably obvious. But you but could say per episode, pound for pound, pound like for pound, DuckTales, Duck Tales is yeah. still best. Um, we also have Space Force season one. That's a Netflix thing, which is just kind of a funny comedy. It was really funny. Yeah. Kidding, which once again, this is we watched season one and then I think two it was recently very happened. Very good dark comedy. Very good dark comedy from Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Um, Sad that they're not gonna continue it. But once again, I'm happy with what is there, and that's a, okay. yeah. Um, Umbrella season uh, season two, which was okay. I don't think I, I think didn't enjoy you, it as much as the first one. You didn't one. like it as much as the first one because they stayed separated for almost the entire yeah. season. Um, you got Doom Patrol, which is still fantastic. The most comic booky comic book show still. It is the period. most comic book version of a TV show. Also very mature. Yeah. Um, Muppets Now, which was another fun take on oh the Muppets. God, Keep in mind, we had so the Muppets original, yeah. the Muppets TV, which was like 30 Rock, and this is like Muppets Now, so it's like they're doing a web show and all the machinations behind it, that. Yeah, and the, the, the format 
that they chose for it with it being like a streaming slash Zoom call live stream. The timing was for that good. presentation couldn't have been more apropos. Uh, Raised by Wolves, which was started okay and then just dropped like a stone. Uh, I was uh, like, I don't remember this one. Wait, yes, I do. Yeah. I liked it a lot more than you did. Um, Boy Season 2, still extremely graphic and gritty. Still and really good. Still good. Still very much enjoying um, that story. Same thing with Carmen San Diego. Archer, we were kind of disappointed with. Yeah, because it was just back to the very first season, kind of. It was just kind of like, hmm. Yeah. Um, Blood of Zeus, which people are recommending. I'm like, it was the same art what... studio that did Castlevania, and we were unfortunately very disappointed because you all of the you story You pushed beats. for it, though, because... I pushed for it yes. because it was the same studio that did Castlevania. And once again... So I had high hopes. And once again, if you keep it down to six to eight episodes, and we're already two or three episodes in, you're probably going to get us to watch the rest. It was just... Meh. Meh. Um, I'm, and I'm really, really sick of stories that have the Greek gods in them portraying Zeus as a good guy, because, no, he was just a hoe. Um, his Dark Materials, still okay. I um, still really like it, because I love that book trilogy. Mandalorian, still entertaining. Um, I think they wrapped it up okay. Yeah, Woke... Meh. I liked Woke a lot more than you did. Once again, that's a show that I'm like, I'm going to watch this show. And then you're like, oh, I'm more interested in it. And I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I liked I'm it a lot more than you did. Because it's about, it's about a black cartoonist. So I think the fact that it like the main character is an artist, too, you also to probably. Um, we then had Animated Actress, I guess, is another one of those reboots. That was just fantastic. Very they did a good. very good job. Very solid. I kind of wish they brought back more of the bits because it was just Animaniacs picking the brain. Anima- like, it was very just. Seemed they, very limited. They, seemed limited. They brought back the things that people actually cared about. Yeah. People didn't care about the other ones. True, but that just made them just kind of, re- not retread, but stick to a winning formula, which is fine. Still good. Like, once again, if you get a chance, watch it. Definitely watch it. It's worth your time. Alien Words, I think it was just a thing I watched. And then Over the Garden Wall, which was something that you had recommended because it's I, an old series. Yeah, I had I had watched that all on my own, and then um, I recommended it to you because it got brought up on Mm-hmm. Something and I was like, oh, I bet I think you would really like that, and you had the time. And I had, and we like I said, because COVID, we <laughs> had the time, time to watch all of these, or at least start watching them and see if there's good. I think the only show we stopped watching was Battle None. Oh, uh, Battle None was just like dread. Because I was gonna say, how are you going with this? Okay, two, three episodes, cool. No, nope, okay, it was we just got, like boring teenage dread. There's other stuff to watch, and we did watch it. Other stuff, yeah. But we definitely wanted to make Nick Minnie's top ten. There's gotta be. It's such a broad spectrum that it should have something for everybody, at least one thing, except reality TV. Like, if you like reality TV, that's not our bags. We like scripted content. So, yes, there's no reality TV there. Um, there's, but, I mean, it's it's mostly humor and sci-fi. Yeah. Some dark, but some light. I mean, there's definitely light. There's lighthearted in darkness there. There's somber. Um, only one of them. I mean, how many of them had boobs in them? Brave New World. <laughs> did Upload probably Eve? did. Maybe Utopia did. Maybe Eve did. I don't Picard think didn't. Utopia did. Um, Picard didn't. But did no, we see Picard's titties? <laughs> you don't. You don't see Picard's titties. No, you don't. A couple, I'm trying to think. There's a couple scenes you could have, but then no. Um, but <laughs> You once don't again, get to see Patrick Stewart's chest. That is our top TV for 2020. We watched a lot, 44, which is definitely higher than we think every watch, any watched any like, TV series each year. I think so. And we want to say the best category of content against movies, anime, and games. Yeah. Like, that was just great. Um, so, hopefully, I'm hoping... Somebody will watch something on a TV show and we'll be able to talk to them about it, but ne- it hasn't ever really happened, ever. Um, so, well, Owl, House, we, we, Owl House, I think we refer. Owl House? Owl House. We uh, refer yeah, to. Marcus and Lilia watched Owl House yes, and they, they really like so it. And one, even one of Lilia's students even drew her as uh, Ida. Uh, yes. Um, so, nonetheless, so there you go. One. We're getting there. <laughs> Making progress as opposed to zero hey, all the other years. One's better than none. Right? Um, But uh, as always, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye!